Hey there, my name is Gustav Bergman. I'm an onboarding manager here at Sigma Computing. And today we're gonna to go over cohort analysis, uh, retention analysis, and we'll do a lifetime value calculation, right? This is gonna depend on how your company does it, but we'll do one variation of it uh, within here. And I think it'll be easy to apply that to whatever you're doing. So we're gonna start off with the plug electronic hands-on lab data table. You can find this in your Sigma sample database. If you wanna follow along with today's Kind of quick tutorial. Uh, first things first is we actually need to add in our customer key column within here because that doesn't actually already exist. And you got to think about what you need in this data set. We need some kind of way to identify our customer, so a customer key or some other way, uh, date of transactions or order dates, and then whatever metrics you want to look at. In, in this instance, right, we're just going to start off with customer key and our dates. And what we need to figure out, right, is first we need to group by our customer keys to organize this data by customer, and then figure out their minimum transaction date. So we're just going to add in a new column here and figure out that minimum of our date. And this is actually their um, acquisition date. And we actually want to truncate this down to quarter as that's what we want to look at. If you want to do it by month, you can of course choose month. In this instance, we're going to do it by quarter. We're going to call this our acquisition quarter. This is also can be referred to as the cohort. Uh, once we've done that, what we're going to want to do is we're going to create a child table where we can leverage this acquisition quarter. So going ahead, we're going to click on that little plus on top right, click on table, create a child table from this. What we're going to do is we're going to group by our acquisition quarter. And in this instance, we want to figure out, okay, how many new customers do we have in each cohort? So we're going to add a new column and we're just going to quickly do a count distinct of our customer key, right? And we do a count distinct because it's better than a count because it will, of course, uh, account for any repetitions that we have in the data. We're going to call this our new customers. Once we have our new customer accounts, secondarily, what we're going to do is we're going to actually group by our uh, date here our order date. And again, we want to truncate this down to quarter. So it matches with what our date truncations are. And we can call this transaction quarter. And again, right, we're going to want to do a count distinct of uh, our customer key to get our returning customers. Go here, we'll go returning customers. Sweet. So now we, when we hit this little minus sign at the top to reduce the gradient of data we're bringing back, you can clearly see we have that for each cohort, both the new customers and returning customers over time. Now that we've done this, right, we can quickly just add an additional column to get our retention. And this is why group tables are so awesome, is we can really easily do percentage calculations and reference higher level groupings, just dividing our new customers or returning customers by new customers. I'm going to quickly formatting that as a percentage. We have 100% for the first one, which makes sense, right? Because that's the first cohort. And we'll call this retention. Uh, at this point, right, you might add in additional columns like cumulative net sales or figuring out like your lifetime value of each cohort by dividing your cumulative net sales by the amount of customers in the cohort. Uh, we're first going to build this retention pivot, and then we'll come back and add in those columns. So I'm going to click on this little plus bar chart in the top right and click on pivot table. And what I forgot to add in actually is our difference, right, between these, the time difference between tra transaction quarter and acquisition quarter. So we're going to come and add in one additional calculation, or we're going to do a date diff. We want to do it by quarter. If you want to do it by month, right, you type in month here. And our start date, right, will, of course, be our acquisition quarter, and then secondarily, uh, our end will be the transaction quarter, quarters since acquisition. Awesome. And then once we have that, we're going to do our quarter since acquisition on our pivot columns. And then we're going to do acquisition quarter on our pivot rows, right? And now we can drop in that retention uh, within here. And we actually want to get rid of that. Get rid of the show totals here. So we're going to get that on the right hand side. Make it look a little bit cleaner. We're going to get rid of that sum of retention. Awesome. And then once we do this, we can come in and add conditional format and to get a little color scale added so we get that kind of cleaner look. 
And that's how you do right uh, retention analysis on some sales data that you may have. So now let's also next now do cumulative net sales, get that a pivot and also lifetime value. So that's pretty easy to do. We're just going to add in some additional columns here. We go add new column and do sum of quantity times price, right, to get our revenue. So I guess it's net revenue. Let's format that here. And then a lot of time, right, you're going to want to look at that as a cumulative sum over time. Great. So right, this is going to add it up quarter over quarter. Uh, and then secondarily, right, we also want to add in uh, another column to get kind of our lifetime value. So we're going to actually divide this cumulative sum by our new customers. And this is one way to do it. Uh, and this will be, right, the lifetime value cumulatively over time. Once we have both these, right, we can create additional pivots. Uh, so again, we're going to do our acquisition quarter on the pivot rows, on the pivot uh, columns, we'll do quarter since acquisition, and then here we can do cumulative at some time. Great. And then again, let's add in some conditional formatting to make it easier to pull out those valuable numbers. And I'm just going to remove that first cohort because it kind of messes up the scale. Great. And again, right, we can remove these totals if you want pretty easily by just getting rid of uh, show totals and show totals here as well. Awesome. So this is going to be net sales or cumulative across the various cohorts and by quarter. And then lastly, we can build one more pivot for that LTV if you want. Acquisition quarter rows versus acquisition and pivot column. And we'll do LTV and the values. Get rid of that show totals at the end. And we're going to come and we'll go and add some conditional formatting in as well and call this our lifetime value. Sweet. So that's a quick way to how to do retention analysis, some cohort analysis with cumulative sales and lifetime value. I hope you found it useful. And um, yeah, let me know in the comment section if you have any questions.